Hello everybody, welcome back to Ink and Fig. My name is Alex and it's been a couple days. <laughs> you may have noticed that a video did not go up at the end of last week as it normally does. Um, I actually filmed my library tour. You can see I am in my library at the moment. Um, I filmed my library tour and I was not happy with the way that it turned out. So rather than um, put out a video that I'm not happy with. I just decided to let it go for the time being and figure it out when I get back because I was away for the weekend. I am now home and as you may have seen on Instagram, I went shopping while I was gone. Um, I went down to Lethbridge for a wedding this weekend and it was fantastic. Such a beautiful time. But I had a lot of time before and after that wedding to go to some bookstores. There were two used bookstores and one independent bookstore that I went to while I was in Lethbridge and I'd like to show you what I got. So the first thing that I picked up was Hector and the Secrets of Love by Francois Lelard. This book appears to be the sequel to Hector and the Search for Happiness which got turned into a movie starring Simon Pegg which I absolutely loved. Didn't realize it was a book to begin with so finding the sequel to that book was kind of a surprise. Um, so I am definitely adding this to my TBR. It is very cute. If it's anything like the movie, I'm going to absolutely adore it. At the request of a major pharmaceutical company, Hector goes in search of a brilliant scientist who has disappeared after developing a molecule with the power to make people fall in love. Leaving behind Clara, his beloved, who unbeknownst to him is making her own investigations into love, he travels to Southeast Asia where he meets the beautiful Vela and is forced to consider the real meaning of love in this fun, thought-provoking parable of modern life. So it sounds very similar to the first one, um, except that we're sort of focusing a little bit more on love rather than happiness. Based on how the movie went, I would say that they were sort of positing that love and happiness are kind of the same thing, um, but I obviously have not read that first book, so I didn't know it existed, um, so maybe. I will learn some things from this book. The next book I found was The Girl Who Was Saturday Night by Heather O'Neill. This book I have seen before, um, and clearly it uh, it's pretty good because it was a Scotiabank Giller Prize finalist, as you can see there on the cover. Essentially, what this is about, the uh, female twin of a pair of twins who essentially is running away from uh, the legacy of her father and in so doing realizes that home is the place she wants to be all along. Family stuff, slice of life, seems to be a Quebecois setting, which we love. Love Canadian stuff, so I'm looking forward to reading this one. The next book that I found was kind of a surprise. It was actually the last thing I picked up after I had already paid the first time. Um, but I found Milk and Honey by Rupi Kaur. I have, I'm, so, I'm super behind on this one. I have actually not read this yet. Um, and I'm excited to finally do so. Now I finally have a copy and I'm excited to finally get to this. The next three books I'm going to show you all come as a set. I am so excited about these. I found volumes 13, 14, and 17 of the Ice Shield 21 manga. This is my favorite manga anime of all time. Um, now granted, as I say that, I acknowledge the anime is not very good. Objectively, it's bad, but it makes me feel good, which means that for me, it is good. Uh, the manga is better. It is renowned as being better. It's actually renowned as being quite good. Um, and I am slowly piecing it together from my various journeys across used bookstores everywhere um, because I simply cannot justify buying a 37 volume completed uh, manga series at full price because in Canada that's very expensive. It, oh okay well fine back in the day back in the day these were $9.99 Canadian a piece these days they are about 13 14 dollars a piece because the economy anyway so i have these three i have another several up on my shelf that i'm looking at right now so you'll notice that there are two missing in this stack these were the only three at the bookstore um but i already own volume 16 so that is fine so i'm only missing volume 15 out of that little chunk 
Um, and with these, I am now up to nine volumes of 37. So well on my way. We still have a lot of room uh, to grow this collection, but we are getting it. I'm so excited. Eventually, I can't wait to do a full reread of the physical books because there's just so many extras in here. Ah, love it. So all of those books were from Big John's used bookshop. The next place that we went was called Analog Books. This was an indie bookstore that was just, it was such a cool place. Like they had Remington typewriters all over the place. They had a huge selection of fountain pens, uh, which we're going to get to in a hot second. Um, and they had a bit of a clearance section up at the front in which I found A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. Full disclosure, I have read this already. I actually read this last year in, I think, October. And, like, honestly, this book slaps. Like, it is about coming of age in extraordinary emotional circumstances. Um, and finding solace and terror in witchcraft. And there's like tons of uh, sapphic representation in here, which we love. And just like the vibes are immaculate. So now that I own a copy, I can read it again, which makes me very happy because honestly, this was incredible. Like, and also just look at this cover. Like, I love this so much. The next thing that we got at that bookstore is not a book, but something I'm excited about nonetheless. We found the Dungeons and Dragons tarot deck. This deck is gorgeous. Um, it does not have the traditional suits, which I found out sort of as we were flipping through. They have the Major Arcana, and then they have the suits of Strength, Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma, which I think are absolutely genius, truly. So this is the little tarot deck booklet. These are the cards. We start off, obviously the Fool is a Bard. Why wouldn't it be? These cards are just absolutely stunning, like... The Empress, the Eight, oh Jesus, we've got the Ace of one of the suits. Unfortunately, it does not indicate on the cards which suit it is. It just says like the number. Backs of the cards look like this. Very excited to break these bad boys in. I have a feeling that these were done at the same printer as, if, if you're familiar with, uh, with tarot decks, I have a feeling that this comes from the same folks who printed Tarot of the Divine. Um, and I say that purely because the the texture of the cards and the um, just the way the box is looks almost identical. Now I mentioned that this bookshop had a selection of fountain pens. They had a huge selection of Ferris wheel press, and Ferris wheel press um, to get in Canada is notoriously expensive. I got a fountain pen. This is a very different fountain pen. For, for those of you who are fountain pen aficionados, this is a very different pen. This is the Ferris Wheel Press Roundabout. On the outside, it just looks like a regular pen, but you will note that most pens, most fountain pens have a nib. This is a rollerball. I got the seafoam color. It comes with a converter, just the same as a regular fountain pen would. But then, rather than, like, a classic nib, you have the rollerball top here. How f***ing cool is that? I cannot wait to try this out. I've been wanting one of these since it came out several months ago. It might be over a year now since they dropped this pen, actually. But, like, I'm so glad that I finally have one in my hands. That was what I got at Analog. The last store that we went to, we went to this morning, actually. It was Echo Used Books. I walked in there sort of hoping to find something, not expecting to find something, and then Canon typically walking out with five books. So let me show you what I got. I got Brit Marie Was Here, 
by Frederick Backman. At first sight, Britt Marie is a fussy, passive-aggressive busybody, but hidden inside her is a woman who has bigger dreams and a warmer heart than anyone around her imagines. When she finds herself alone for the first time in decades, she realizes she's spent her life making choices for the sake of other people. Is it too late for her to change? And in a small town of big-hearted misfits, can Britt Marie find a place where she truly belongs? I actually hadn't heard of this book before, but as soon as I saw that it was a Frederick Backman, I was like, you know what? I actually haven't read any of his books yet, but now I own five of them. So I'm like, I think I need to finally bust in and get some of these read to see what all the hype is about. So looking forward to this one. I found Breath Eyes Memory by Edwidge Danticat. I fell in love with her writing two years ago when I finally started. Uh, the first book that I read from her was Dewbreaker, and then I also r read uh, Brother, I'm Dying. Both of them were absolutely incredible, and this one is the book of hers that I think I hear referenced the most, um, sort of in conjunction with Brother, I'm Dying. So I am stoked, absolutely stoked to read this. This is about a 12-year-old girl who uh, is sent from her home in Haiti to New York to reconnect with her mother, who presumably uh, has been without her for a long time. I'm so excited to read this. Sort of similarly with lost mother-daughter relationships, I found The Tea Girl of Hummingbird Lane by Lisa C. I have never heard of this book. I have heard of Lisa C and I understand that her work is very well regarded, although I have not read her myself. Um, I cannot wait to read this, honestly. It sounds really good. It's about a woman who has a relationship that everyone sort of tells her is not the vibe. She goes for it anyway, ends up with a child that she can't raise, so she um, surrenders her and leaves her with a tea cake. And then the two women over the course of their lives go through you know, the things that one goes through in life and how that brings them together, I guess, through destiny. That's what I'm getting from the back anyway. So we will see where this goes. I'm excited to read this one. All right, the next one I have seen around and around and around Instagram and YouTube and the whole nine yards. And I'm so glad that I finally have a copy in my hands. I found The Henna Artist by Alka Joshi. I have heard nothing but good things about this. It keeps being on like all of the recommended reads lists that I keep coming up against. And I'm like, you know what, honestly, yeah, can't wait to read this. Escaping from an arranged and abusive marriage, 17 year old Lakshmi makes her way alone from her 1950s rural village to the vibrant pink city of Jaipur, where she becomes the henna artist and confidant most in demand to the wealthy women of the upper class. I cannot wait to read this. Honestly, like this, again, has been recommended over and over and over again in the circles that I'm in on Instagram. And I'm like, I have to get my hands on this. And I found it. Michael Chabon's The Yiddish Policeman's Union. Honestly, I was sucked in by the cover. Let's I'm going to be completely honest about this. It's cool. The title sounds cool. And honestly, this just like it's got the vibe, you know what I mean? For 60 years, Jewish refugees and their descendants have prospered in the federal district of Sitka, a temporary safe haven created in the wake of revelations of the Holocaust and the shocking 1948 collapse of the fledgling state of Israel. Proud, grateful, and longing to be American, the Jews of the Sitka district have created their own little world in the Alaskan panhandle, a vibrant, gritty, soulful, and complex frontier city that moves the music of Yiddish. For 60 years, they have been left alone, neglected and half forgotten in a backwater of history. Now the district is set to revert to Alaskan control and their dream is coming to an end. Once again, the tides of history threaten to sweep them up and carry them off to the unknown. Very cool premise. I think this is gonna give some very interesting insight into the history of um, Jewish folks here in North America, particularly in Alaska and we'll see where it goes just look at this book though like it's absolutely gorgeous so that was what i got in all of my adventures down in lethbridge i had a wonderful time and i clearly had a very good haul um so that is it for today's video thank you so much for hanging out with me for looking at all my stuff uh for hopefully screaming about all of my stuff with me and if you see any favorites in this video, please let me know. I want to know which ones to get on my TBR first. You can follow me on all of my social media at Ink and Fig. Please leave me a like and throw a comment down below. 
pop a little book emoji in the comments for me so I know you made it all the way to the end and I will see you in the next one. Bye!